Welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Shogi, a lot of Scrabble, many other games, uh, but today we're here for some chess. And I see that uh, presently there's the hourly rapid arena going on. So let's play in this. It's been a while since we played some rapid games. We've played, we have played at least 10 rated rapid games or 10 rapid rated games. We've already done 10 of those, so we're able to play in this hourly event. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Let me check my audio. I seem to be not able to hear my own audio. One second. All right, so they're playing a Karocon. There we go. And then I uh, want to make sure that the microphone's set up correctly. Here we go, we take this, transition into a Panov Botvinnik attack. They've not played Knight F6 first, so Bishop G4 is no longer playable. Uh, I don't understand what makes this line particularly desirable. Generally, I end up playing my Bishop and Queen like this, and then I checkmate on H7 when they're not looking. And works on Lee Chess for whatever reason. It's pretty funny. Um, so the other thing is that I've played this particular opening before, and against Bishop d6, I think Stockfish recommends c5. Normally c5 doesn't make sense, but here I think it does. And we'll just continue developing our pieces. We'll eventually play pawn b4. Whenever it most makes sense to play pawn b4, we'll play it. Maybe we play knight e5 here. Um, yeah, our opponent's not done anything aggressive at all. So I'm tempted to do something even more aggressive. Just claiming the center. All right, they're trying to stop me from playing pawn Actually, it's not clear what this does. It stops me from putting a piece on d6. Um, hmm. Alright. Wait, I just gave up this pawn and they didn't take it. Uh, that's strange. Let's pretend we did this first. Alright, so... I'm going to play my typical move here. Um, I've got h5 covered, so yeah, they have to go back. This is so bizarre. All right, so we'll pretend like we're preparing to push this pawn. In actuality, we're preparing this, but don't want to get hit with a knight fork. So um, let the cheapos happen, I guess. I control this square, I control that square. Yeah, they have to retreat at this point. And now we can consider things like that. Um, not that it works every time, but we can consider things like that. Um, or things like this. Um, if we do queen g4, they do queen f6. That's no fun. Um, I do queen d3. I don't know what they do. Let's play queen d3. I'm only playing quickly because my opponent is playing basically instantaneously. Right, so they've created this devastating hole on their king side that they'll never be able to fix. Um... This is so puzzling. Why would anybody play this way? All right, let's exchange some pieces. So we've exchanged bishop. And so now they have this bishop, and they have these pawns. And they can't really change any of that now. Uh, it's not like you can just move the bishop to the other square color. Um... The 
Yeah. That's so weird. I don't know why anybody would play this way. Um, maybe it's fun somehow. I don't know. But now we control this and this, so... I'm just going to attack all the dark squares. Mm -hmm. Let's offer a queen exchange. And just win the endgame. <laughs> I say this tongue-in-cheek because I have a tendency to win endgames that I shouldn't. But this one, like, our opponent has stepped into a very uh, sad position. So, if somehow they manage to draw this, I will be impressed. Alright, uh, let's put our bishop here. See what they do. Now this is a target, so I can go like that. So now I control this square. And I force the bishop to move away, so now their knight and rook are defending this pawn. Um, so this is our next target. Right, so they've successfully targeted one pawn. And I can go and defend this in a single move. If I really want to, and I think I do. It's a good pawn. Oh, E-N means English. I have a translation bot that's powered by Google Translate. So I also play Shogi. Sometimes I have uh, an international audience present, and they find it helpful for me to have translations uh, occur. My microphone is on, correct? I believe it. Yeah, it's on. So just don't worry about the translations if they're too confusing. Um, it's just for the sake of an international audience. I really think uh, there should be some more um, translation built into this website that we're broadcasting through. It should just be a built-in feature, honestly. That way anybody could listen and watch, and even deaf people could easily... I mean, I have closed captions enabled, too. Uh, accessibility does matter. Uh, or rather, access matters. Alright, so I'm going to go back and prepare this push. And to prepare this, we're going to play that. Yeah... Uh, it's my bot account that has several bots running in it, and one of them is a translation bot, as ex explained in the About section of my channel. Um, yeah, it turns out there's a lot of excellent open source software out there. Okay, my opponent's trying to check me, so I'm going to step away from this check. But also, maybe they're trying to like scare my knight. Maybe. Okay, this is bizarre. This makes it harder for them to defend the uh, H pawn. Uh, I didn't expect that. All right, we're just gonna defend this. Yep, they chase my knight as expected. Um, let's see how far they go chasing it. If the rook chases... Okay, so this is just a free pawn. They were trying to be clever, and now we have an exciting position. So... Now, it's possible I might not be completely winning this. 
it's possible that they might somehow manage to draw it, but it's not going to be easy for them to hold. So my plan, rook h3, rook h1, king b3. Uh, another plan, king b3 and push and push. Actually, do I need king b3 for that? I don't think I do. Uh, maybe my king actually belongs over here. Yeah, okay, my opponent sees this other idea. Uh, but they didn't see idea number three, which is that I go and attack this rook or I hit the bishop. All right, they saw the fork. But we're going to kick the rook now. So I'm bringing my king over to defend this pawn so that I can target this one. I also have access to the square again. Um, <laughs> oh, well, this simplifies matters. <laughs> Hello. All right. Hey, I'm letting your bishop be active again, and it's only going to cost you the game. All right, so you know, you've used multivariant stockfish for your bot, but you never knew you could compile it. Oh, um, I mean, yeah, I don't see why. Feel free to ask questions. Just I might not be able to answer questions, but um, feel free to ask. Again, I don't provide any guarantee that I'm going to be able to answer the question. And usually the, pers the reason a person will ask if they can ask is because then they demand an answer afterward. But um, yeah, just understand I'll try to answer, but... Um, okay. I think they're trying to win this pawn. I might lose this end game. I will be so ashamed if and when I lose this. I'm probably losing this. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, yeah, I needed to play my rook to h1 instead of h2. That's going to cost me the game. That singular off by one square. That's fatal for my game. I think. <sighs> I play like 40 perfect moves in a row, then I play one mistake, and the entire game is lost. Simply delightful. But, uh, I mean, it, this happens. Alright, yeah, you win my knight. If I move my king down, I lose the rook, so we're gonna try it now. This isn't even worth trying to defend. Congratulations, you win. I was distracted. <laughs> uh, why does it lose to its own re- Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, does it run in the Go client? Uh, it works both in the Python client and the Go client. As for why it loses to the 2018 release, I've spent, I don't know, two years investigating that, and I have no idea. So, I don't know what to tell you. Um, 
Yeah, I can't really explain further. Oh, the screen is flickering the entire... Is the screen flickering? What specifically is flickering here? I don't see that. After every move, there is a flicker. Oh. Um... How do I troubleshoot this? I did see some very, very light flickering here, but I thought that was just me. Um, I... Oof. How do I fix Leech Us? I don't understand what could be causing the flickering. I see my cursor weirding out a bit. But this is like a... Oh, I see, yeah. This is the built-in Windows cursor. This is the one I use for accessibility, just because, like, it's a nice, large, colored cursor. But you're right, that, um... Interesting. Well... Yeah, I don't know how to fix that, unfortunately. Uh, it is a... Like, I'm using the Microsoft Edge latest browser on the Windows 10 operating system using, uh, like, all the latest, greatest stuff that's out there on a vanilla... Like, I there's nothing I've done to make this such that it should be flickering like this, and yet we can see it clearly is flickering. Um, I could file a bug with Microsoft, I guess. They'd probably say there's something wrong with the web page. But how could that be? Like, every other web page does not have this issue. It's just this one web page that uh, I've ever seen this flickering effect on. Oh, 42 points, uh, 42 points lost, you're saying. Um, you're talking about my rating that I, last game or something with 42 points? I wasn't even looking at the rating. But yeah, I, I lost to a 1700 because I played one bad move, maybe two bad moves that game. Uh, they clearly performed very well. I'm not accusing them of cheating. I'm just saying that they, a 1700 generally does not outplay me in an endgame. Uh, so clearly, like, they should not be 1700 is the accusation. And the rating system will fix that. They'll win some games, and their rating will go up. Uh, alright, so there's a check. And there's mate in one. All right, so we beat a 1300. Shows that I know how to win sometimes. Um, maybe there's a hardware acceleration setting or something. Maybe I could disable hardware acceleration. Okay, yeah, let's disable hard. Okay, I have to restart the browser. Give me a second, guys. Uh, sorry, one second, as we get the browser back online, we have disabled hardware acceleration. Um, don't know if that'll fix it. No, I still see it flickering. But this is the only web page where this ever happens. And this is using the built-in Microsoft settings. I did change the cursor size, so you could argue that I'm playing with a non-standard cursor, although it's part of the Windows operating system. Um, I don't know, we could try, I could get the Vivaldi browser out. I've been meaning to try that for some time here. Um, 
Let me see if I can log in, etc., with Vivaldi, and we could try that browser to see whether or not that has similar issues. Leechess.org. Join the game. All right, I've not set everything up on Vivaldi, so bear with me one second. Um, so we're going to capture now my other browser, Vivaldi. Which I've not taken any time to set up. And now we need to get this set up. Uh, so let's go board size, board geometry. There we go. Uh, Zen mode activate. There, see? People complain it takes forever to get a live stream set up. We just switched browsers midstream. Yeah, that's an edge bug. Or it's a bug with um, Lee Chess with Edge. So thanks for letting me know. Um, thanks for bearing with me as we did the midstream browser switch. Uh, yeah, no, it's true. I haven't played on Lee Chess in quite some time, so um, I hadn't like I was solving puzzles this morning. I didn't see that flicker this morning, so it was just after I'd gone. Uh, live with my live stream on Lee Chess, starting to play games in this tournament setting. Only then, with all those factors, uh, did Lee Chess and Microsoft Edge start showing that flickering. And that happened both before and after I toggled hardware, oh, hardware acceleration. I did see my cursor flicker here for a second, um, but it had nothing to do with making a move. And hopefully it won't happen again. Alright, so we're just going to hide in the corner. And this nullifies the rip. Oh. <laughs> okay, I can't draw arrows, guys. Uh, if I draw arrows, uh, Vivaldi's going to want to navigate me. So, use your imagination. <laughs> Does anybody know how to disable, like... Mouse gesture navigation. Uh, I don't know how Vivaldi works. I've used it before for live streaming, but I don't remember where to find all the settings. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to open up a new window, go to the settings menu, and see if I can disable a mouse something or other. Okay, there's the mouse menu. Allow rocker gestures. No, let's not allow rocker gestures. Let's not allow gestures. Don't know if that's going to work or not. <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> uh, technology. All right, so... Yeah, if I accidentally like resign the game or something due to mouse... Okay, I can draw arrows and circles and things again. Yay. Ah, uh, well, that was an adventure. Um, so this is where I want to go. This is my other idea. Uh, I'm willing to give away pawns in the center of the board because each time they take a pawn, we hit the queen. They're trying to set up some cheapo, and it's not going to work. Here, do you want this pawn? You can have this one, too. You want this one? It's not free. All right, they didn't want that one. Um, hmm. Let's just go this way. For no reason whatsoever, other than maybe threatening, like, this stuff. All right, all right. My opponent's actually paying attention. We're going to have to try to win this. So... Next, we bring the rook up and not that far, up and over, and just try to checkmate them. That's the plan. All right, they took a pawn. 
So let's go up and over this way just for pretend we're going to play rook a3. All right, let's take this. That looks like a good piece. Thanks for the game. I wonder. So looking at yeah, an OBS. I have one thing put in blogged into OBS. I have like the Bongo Cat plugin, but it's disabled at present. So there shouldn't be any conflict between things plugged into OBS and uh, Microsoft Edge. But I've been meaning to switch to Vivaldi for some time now, so I got that done. Are we going to see... Yes, yes, Knight C3. Here we go, my opening. I called dibs on this opening. Can you call dibs on an opening? I don't know, but I just did. So, all right. This is equal. There is a way to play with this with white um, that doesn't immediately lead to equality. It actually leads to a worse position for white, but it is extremely tricky. So I play this line, and that's why I call dibs on it. <laughs> it's my opening. Uh, all right. Nobody else will play it because it's a bad opening, but um, yeah, we're just going to defend the knight. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to defend the knight again. And now they're probably going to play this back. No, okay. Uh, I have not seen this one before. That's interesting. I mean, the queen doesn't do anything here, but um, other than that, it's interesting. So, we're up a pawn. Let's, uh, yeah, if they play knight e5, we could just play f6. And they take here, we take back. Note that nothing is defending this rook. So I could just move my knight anywhere with tempo. Um, if I take the pawn, they do queen takes knight. We can exchange and I could take this bishop and then that's no fun. Um, there's more fun things I can do, surely. But what? <clears throat> I mean, I think knight g5 just wins a bishop. Let's try knight g5. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they could take my knight. <laughs> I could take their bishop. All right, this is not as clear as I thought. My mistake. Oh, wow, yeah, I forgot. I've got a lot of commands, don't I? Who knew? I should have known. Um... Yeah, hopefully all of those are still appropriate. Wow, that's a lot of commands. Uh, I'll have to start cleaning that up a bit. All right, so my opponent wants me to invade. I shall invade. I mean, my opponent's playing quite well, other than playing my opening and it not being the most sound opening to be played. But other than that, they're playing very resourcefully in this extremely challenging position. Uh, and now they just blundered the game. Uh, but they were playing very well. Oh, I'm sorry. This does not blunder the game because rookie one is not trivially lost. Uh, they threaten queen e8 checkmate if I take the bishop. Um, even so, this is not so easy for them to hold on to. So they're going to exchange rooks now, and then probably take here with check, and there might be a perpetual or something. I don't know.
Oh, wow. Check. Check. Checkmate. Thanks for the game. Very nicely played, honestly. I just tricked him at the last second, but other than that, it was quite good. Oh yeah, my latest command I added was System D, courtesy of Brian Lunduk. Uh, that was really funny. He's added this news article. It's satire, but um, so he talks about how System D is the uh, the task scheduler for Linux, uh, and that. They're going to have this new release of System D, which is going to have all these new features, but it's not going to be its own operating system. All right, let's see where this goes. If they didn't do bishop takes, I would have severely questioned what was going on here. Um, as it is, I just mostly question, like, why they would choose this because I get to attack a lot in this position. Here, let's just bring out the queen. You win my rook, I maybe win something. I don't know. Oh, I could have taken this knight. Oh, taking this knight tends to be really painful for white. Uh, I could still take it. Do I want it? Yeah, yeah, let's take that. Sure. Why not? If they do knight takes d5, we maybe take on b2. Yeah. Alright. Um, I don't know why we're playing this opening. Um, but, yeah, I need to defend against these knight forks. I realize they could do bishop takes b8, and I'm fine with that. Okay, that, that confuses me. Um, why I'm confused is that... Oh, there's just a lot of priorities. I've not castled, and I'm trading off all of my active pieces. But I think it's okay because I'm not going to get checkmated. If I were getting checkmated here, that would be a different matter, but I think I'm safe. Oh, wow. I missed it, but yeah, apparently... Uh, yeah, thanks to folks for following. I appreciate Hopefully you enjoyed this. I don't always play chess. I do play a lot of other board games and... Sometimes I'll have a coding stream, and I'll put that in capital letters, and it'll say coding. And you'll know those are the ones you probably would prefer to like go out and watch paint dry or something, but uh, I do that live streaming of coding from time to time, especially if I can do some kind of software demo with it. All right, is my opponent not taking an F3? Um, to me... Okay, yeah, that looks like the best move. Um, if it's the best move, just play it. <laughs> All right. So... Mm -hmm. So my opponent has the bishop pair. And therefore they would like... Well, I would prefer to exchange all the pawns. They would prefer to exchange pieces. Oh, they miscastled. Just going to save my butt, because otherwise this position was very difficult. All right. Then we go defend the knight. So I'm finally getting my pieces into good squares. Or onto good squares. 
Right, and that's a good square for their bishop. And I can't stop that from happening. Um, so, oh boy. What do I do about this, like, attack on g7? Okay, well, no, this, my best plans or ideas seem to drop this pawn. So I need to play this, defend that point, then I can withdraw and defend this. Um, yeah, I don't have time to execute my plans. So we'll have to settle for plan B, which is just, like, let everything collapse in a fiery mess. Um, and pretend that it's fine. Uh, then they probably take my knight. Although this gives me the bishop. Alright, they didn't want to take my knight, that's okay. I wouldn't want to take it either. Um, I'm trying to find a decent move here. Yeah, I think this is the best I can come up with. I had seven minutes to find a move. I played quickly because we have an audience. But yeah, next up is me trying to divert my bishop um, so I can defend this pawn and my bishop can attack outside of my pawn chain, although I don't have a chain. It's just a pawn. But yeah, once I've got this file plugged, Oh, oh, that is clever. I am screwed. Wow. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Now that is very painful. Um, I lose a pawn. It's an important pawn. Uh, we're gonna defend this point. and try to hold on. <laughs> I could have tried knight e8. It didn't look fun. This looks more fun somehow. But yeah, this is not my greatest position ever. If they play rook g5, I have bishop e6. Uh, yep, that's the obvious rejoinder. And to that, uh, we now attack this bishop. And once they defend the bishop, I don't know. We hope to find some other tactic. We are slowly running out of, or quickly running out of tactics, rather. But yeah, I've defended, so now we have to go back. And hope that there's no checkmate. Okay, amazingly, my opponent gives away their best piece. Uh, they really could have used or benefited from that bishop. So I'm going to start offering peace exchanges. Ah, to do. Um, I'm not in any hurry to trade, but I am willing to trade. All right, they're in a hurry to trade, so we'll allow it. Now all I have to do is trade off all the pawns without getting checkmated. <laughs> all I have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not happening. I'm getting checkmated somehow, but let's pretend for a second that things are okay. So let's see if we can hit this pawn. Um, hmm. All right, yeah, I need to defend back here. Let's put all our pawns on the light squares just to have a fun effect. All right, um, let's just try to trade the pawns. What else can we do?
Oh, I'm sorry. This is one other thing we can do. We can offer to exchange rooks. That way I can try to pick this pawn up. But yeah, it looks like I am not in a great position here. Capture toward the center. Because pawns toward the center are more effective than pawns on the edge. Just as a general rule. For principle. So this is the next target. Mm -hmm. We take it. This is the next goal. Let's just keep going. Oh. Hey, we've trapped the knight. Okay, if we take pawn takes king here... Yeah, no, this end game is just over. Uh, there's no tricks here, right? I hope. <laughs> just to make this less exciting, we'll push the king in front. Well, that didn't end the way we expected. But um, at least studying all these uh, Lee Chess tactics have pointed out all the exceptions to the rule. All right, there's a fork. I'll take one of these. Oops, I should not have played there. Well, that's OK. I needed to cover some more squares anyway. Alright, you gonna push the pawn? Thanks for the game. Oh. Yeah, I don't need the Tron command anymore. There we go. It's one fewer command. We don't have to worry about it. Um, all right, there we go. Oh, we don't need the... You could use the wordsmith command at some point. Yes, yeah, so I've got like a command that'll anagram words. Um, so that's a fun little game. Uh, so, yep. Yeah, got that installed. Um, Yeah, among other things. And that bot is installed courtesy of uh, Danny Barker. And Oh, I should update that link to reference um, the most current version of the software. Which, yes, it does exist on my GitHub, but it also exists on hers. So I should point it at hers. Alright, this Queen H4, I've considered it in tournament play uh it just loses a tempo in an opening where you really can't afford to lose tempi at all um so i forget if 95 is the correct reputation or if it's something else but we're gonna play 95 this time and see where we end up So they intend to castle, 
I intend knight d5. We're going to play knight d5 now, as promised. I don't know where we're supposed to go next. I feel like this is a time I should start sacking everything. Here, let's just give up the knight. We weren't using it anyway. Alright, and then we'll just give up this bishop. And, I don't know, let's bring the queen out. This maybe looks fun. So, threats are these. Um, amazingly, I'm allowed to just execute my threat without any intervention. Um, yeah, we got some threats here. That's for sure. Uh, so, the question is really, do I take the bishop or do I take this check? Um, if I take the bishop, they check me. I think I'm fine. I think either one is good. I think there are two refutations to my opponent's move. Um, let's take the bishop so I don't lose material. Maybe knight takes c7 is incorrect. But yeah, since this is a pin, we're also threatening to take here. But we're also threatening to take there, but we're also threatening this. So, um, lots of threats. Yeah, the king's bishop's gambit, where you play pawn king four and then pawn king bishop four, and then play bishop to queen bishop whatever. Uh, that particular version of the king's gambit is kind of exciting. I learned the hard way through tournament play that it's not so easy to refute. Um, I burned a lot of time on my clock in a tournament game and also lost to a very well-prepared opponent. So, yeah, it's a good variation of the King's Gambit to be aware of. Alright, so we just win the Queen now. Actually, this is... well, this doesn't win the Queen. <laughs> this Bishop check... But rookie one definitely wins it. All right, and then we don't have a fork. I really wanted there to be some fork with like one of these squares somehow and the king, but the king and that just haven't lined up the right way for that. Oh, right, I've moved my king already. I cannot castle after moving the king. So. Huh, we're only up one point because we've lost so many pawns. Alright, I didn't realize that. It's pretty funny. Either way, my king is just a little bit safer than their king is in this position. Um... Hmm, man, where's my game-winning tactic? Oh, there it is. There it is. I'll just play this over and win the rook. Alright, let's first threaten checkmate. Sure, why not? Then we can go back over and win the rook. Okay, thanks for the game. Yeah, these rapid time controls are pretty unpredictable. So, either my chat window is stuck, or people just enjoy listening to my voice or something. I don't know. I thought that game ended well. It looks like folks are taking a break from the tournament after I beat them. Um, either that, or there's just a lot of other fun things going on. Oh, there's four people streaming this event. I'm one of four streamers. <laughs> All right, good luck. Let's do it. I'm 
When somebody goes berserk... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright, I don't feel like facing the sharpest lines right now. Normally I'd be up for just taking the knight, but... When I'm facing somebody who goes berserk, it's usually because they have a good rating. Um, and they want the extra tournament point. And think that they can outplay me. And in many cases, they're correct. Um, that I am... I can be outplayed. Alright, do we castle queenside for the lulls? Let's do it. <laughs> we castle queenside. Alright, I'm in so much trouble for castling queenside. But hey, we have to do something for the crowd. Um... All right, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh, this is not going to end well. Um, here, let's hit the knight. We're probably going to end up sacrificing the queen here in just a second. And that's fine. Yeah, I thought they might do this. Rather, after I played my move, I thought they might do this. Probably should have, like, tried to calculate this in advance. Um, but hey, all of our pieces are active. Everything's fine other than us not having a queen, so... Who cares about the queen? Um, turns out probably a lot of players. Uh, so we attack this pawn, we attack this pawn, we pretend to have an attack somewhere. I don't know. I need a better idea. Um, bishop d4 almost works. Oh, no, it's, it's a disaster. I can't do bishop d4. Um, how about knight e5? There's a threat. We might see Rook takes Knight. We might get some really exciting tactics on this game. I don't know. But uh, we don't have a queen. We don't need a queen. Alright, so this endgame sucks <laughs> from a practical perspective. Nobody wants to defend with the two Rooks. Um... Damn. Wait. Okay, what? Um. Oh, this is complicated. I don't want to lose this pawn. If I lose this pawn, I'm in deep doo-doo. Hmm. If I push the pawn, there's a good chance I lose material. If I don't push the pawn, the game is lost. Quite the conundrum. Um, This is a disaster waiting to happen, but show me the move. Show me how you win this with the queen, because I tried to find it and I couldn't find the win. Oh, there it is. Yeah, nicely done. Wow. Okay, we got crushed. I didn't see that coming. Wow. All right. How long ago was this lost? This is lost ever since we did not play a6. So pawn e4 was the losing move. That was an awesome game. <sighs> wow. All right. 
I mouse slipped. Welcome to the club. Hey. I'm gonna play one more here. Unless, like, I don't, I don't foresee how we can manage to get two games in before the end of the tournament. Oh, we got a Blumenfeld Gambit. I don't know this one. Is this the one where I can take this pawn and then I bring the knight out or something? I forget how this goes. And then we could do this, maybe? Oh, I've blocked my bishop, so I can't play bishop f3 anymore. Hmm. Okay. Clearly my opponent is well-versed in whatever this is. Um, I can't play pawn g4. I was pretending that I could play it and seeing if I could scare them. Um, but pawn g4 is a rook sacrifice. Um, which maybe is playable? Maybe I can do this, even though it looks insane? Let's just play this. And see if I could play like bishop f4, bishop c7 something. Alright. My opponent's trying to stop me from castling. I might castle queenside, which seems fun, let's say. Hmm. Yep, so I guess the current plan might be, I don't know, something like this or something like that. I don't know. Uh, this is hanging, but I don't really like... I don't want to grab this pawn. If somehow grabbing that pawn wins, it's not entertaining. More likely I'm actually threatening knight e5 in a queen exchange somehow, and maybe not losing all my pawns. Um, okay. Um... Ninety five. Ninety five is complicated. I think we have to play it. Just somehow, I think my bishop neat belongs on e five, and the only way to get the bishop onto e five is for us to exchange here. Also, g7 is momentarily hanging, so if we exchange queens, bishop takes, bishop takes g2, rook g1, bishop moves somewhere, rook takes pawn. But the somewhere the bishop could move to could be the e4 square. Alright, now this simplifies things greatly, because um, I can just exchange queens and not worry about a million different tactics. And I'm just slightly better here. Since I'm up one pawn. But we'll make things fun. We'll castle. Even though we don't have to. Even though probably bishop e2 was safer. Um, right. Wait. Why this move, actually? It feels right, but I don't think it's right. Um, hmm. Yeah, actually, there's a problem with this bishop exchange. And that is, I can plug this diagonal. So this frees me to play bishop e2. Uh, 
All right, they're fine with me putting a target that they can strike at. I could see why they're okay with that. Um, problem is this is a target too. Um, All right, we stop knight f4. We break this pin, which was really easy to break. If they could somehow smash this d pawn off the board, uh, they'd be in a better position. So it's important that I not lose this pawn, at least for right now. Um, okay. That's bizarre for several reasons. Um, I'm going to exchange my bishop. And I say exchange because this knight can't move anywhere. But my opponent can defend the knight. But not for long. So that's the exchange, and then we hit this. So my pawn covers this square, my knight covers this one, my knight covers this. Yeah, they take this step backward. Um, So this is the plan. If they play f5, I play knight g5. If they play h6, to prevent me from doing this, um, we figure something out. But we didn't have to figure anything out, so we got this nice little outpost. I mean, maybe somehow they could take the pawn and I might not have an outpost anymore, but... Um, outposts are kind of cool. Um, don't even have to move there right away. All right, we're going to stop Rook C5. So we guard that square. Next we play this. Um, nicely done. Nicely done. You caught me not paying attention. All right, now we have to try to draw the end game. My attention was diverted trying to think about should we play one more game after this. So, yeah. Sorry, I was not thinking about this game anymore. If it were like a money or tournament game or something, I might like try harder. But, um,. Yeah, there's literally, other than online rating points and reputation, there's not a whole lot of reason for me to care about this game. <laughs> so I'm more than willing to accidentally forget about things. Um, but also, it's not even clear that I'm lost yet. I mean, this is not good at all, but could be a whole lot worse. They're trying to bait me into taking the pawn. It won't work. So I take that, and then I'm going to take this one next. And now we just win. 
probably. I mean, we've got a lot of pawns. We got three pawns for that bishop. And they're not bad pawns either. Um... All right, what's your plan? Because I know what my plan is. I'm not sure what yours is. All right, can I just take this? I know it makes the game more dramatic if I take it, but I think I can actually... It's not worth it. It is not worth it. We don't need that drama here. All right, um... Let's push this one. Thanks for the game. I think. Hmm, maybe it's not so obvious who wins. All right, whatever. We have to play this anyway. Oh my gosh. All right, well, we'll just play this. <laughs> I'm the greatest endgame player of all time. Not really, but yeah, that was an uh, exciting game. Until the point where I stopped caring about it, and... Then it got exciting at the very end when my opponent completely whiffed, um, which normally does not happen there. All right, so I was trying to like bring the queen out, do the queen f7 mate thing. Um, all right, if they play bishop g4, we just take on f7. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Can I win the f7 pawn? Really looks like I can win that pawn now. Let's try to win it. They'll have to give up another pawn. Then after giving that up, I'll offer a queen exchange. So... If they exchange queens, we are up two pawns in an endgame. Yeah, I didn't think that I'd keep both these pawns forever, but... You know, we can try. Of course now they can... well, okay, that's kind of fun. Yeah, should we just keep doubling down on trying to defend this guy? <laughs> yeah, ultimately we were not able to save all the pawns. But hey. Uh, wait, we're not up two pawns, we were up one pawn. And we're no longer up that one pawn. Oops. <laughs> well, I can't count. Can we fault me for being excited? Yeah, so I just traded into an equal endgame. I should not have exchanged queens. Because I can't win this. Um, yeah, whatever. We'll get there, good bishop. Alright. Um, yeah, this actually is going to be one hell of a mess. Because that's not my... Well... We have the outside past pawn. We have the high ground. Alright, so let's defend this. And try to make this endgame not suck so bad. Um, yeah, this is going to hurt a lot. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see here. Are they going to play a5? That's not a5. That is one square away from a5. You were so close. You almost managed to play a5 here. Um, yep, so. The only thing in my favor is that we're playing in this tournament, and the tournament clock runs out in about five minutes. So if they care about the tournament points, they might be playing um, either to try to win this or to try to draw this in five minutes. Even though that makes like no sense in terms of the outcome of this game. So that's the one saving grace, is they might be shooting for something other than uh, trying to play the best moves here. All right, we're going to play king f1. And, or maybe bishop e3 is better. I'm not sure. Um, all right, here, so we don't get checkmated, we have to play king f1. Oh, they spot the tactic. Nicely spotted. All right, so what do we do now? <laughs> oh my goodness. This is going to be a mess. Um, so we rely on the fact that this rook is aligned with the king. So because the king and the rook are aligned here, I could play bishop to b4 and then follow this with like pawn f4. If we didn't have rook takes d7 being check, this would have been a different position. Um, yeah, we're just going to sack this because I don't care anymore. And we have an audience and we want to entertain. And our opponent plays good moves. Hmm. All right, now we try to take the d file, which is what I should have been doing earlier. Uh, except I was afraid of that. But that's okay. Right, so... They take the D file, I take the H file. I've got... <laughs> A queenside majority I should be pushing, except for the fact that pushing the queenside majority um, kind of traps my bishop in some sense. So I have to resort to all these other tricky moves first. Um, yeah, let's play this up here. And then we're going to come around over here or there or something. So we have this idea, we've got this idea. I don't know what else. There's probably other ideas here somehow. But yeah, they're able to push f5 without consequence, so they honestly should just immediately push it. There's no drawback to pushing pawn f5. So... All right. Instead, we have this sequence. Um, so I'm going to try to tie their king to the defense of the f pawn. Um, that's curious. I should be pushing on the queen side in almost every circumstance. Like, unless there's a very specific tactic justifying this, and there is. Like, normally I'm supposed to be pushing on the queen side. So I don't lose this pawn race. But here the tactic allows me to split up their pawns. Uh, it justifies um, 
be pushing on the other side of the board. Now they should just retreat and not take this. And things get complicated there. Uh, that's not a retreat. Thanks for the game. End games are hard, especially if you don't study them. <laughs> I would recommend end game study. Um, go to a library, see if they got books on end games. End game books are fun to read. You'll be amazed what players could do with just a few pieces. Like, there's so much fantastic artwork that's been done in the field of end game study. Right, and this is the problem here, is that I mop up their promoting pawn, and then I have an advanced G pawn. Thanks for the game. Yeah, well, that was exciting until it wasn't. Um, yeah. Oh, 2152. All right, yeah, they were trying to win the tournament. And I got in their way. Um, this win was not entirely deserved. We were both playing... I mean, did I play any aggressive moves this game? Or was I just playing for a draw, essentially? I was playing for any outcome. Um, my opponent needed a win. So they played a lot of really aggressive moves. I played h4. They could have just taken this. Oh, h4 was a good move. All right, rook e to d1 was slow. Um, better was bishop c3. Yes, this would have been smart. This would have required me to understand what's going on. So they had a couple of winning plays here that they missed. My rook f8 apparently loses to rook d3. Yeah, so I was banking on this and being able to take the pawn. Turns out they have two pieces protecting this pawn, so my entire concept makes no sense at all. Plus I'm down a move, because my bishop's not on e7 already. So, yeah. I needed to retreat. And I just was not going to retreat in a blitz game, but it was necessary here. And then g4 apparently is a blunder. I thought that they would... Pl oh. Wait, this is good? Why is this good? So rook takes, they push here. Um, wait, do I not have something like this? What's going on here? Rook takes b3. Oh, I can't take this pawn here because, um, they are promote on the king's side, but also because my bishop is pinned to my rook. So all the normal counterplay ideas that I was banking on just were not at all here after g4. So again, I should have just retreated. Yeah. Here bishop c3 makes a lot of sense, because like I hit this twice, and you know that there's not a lot that either player can do here. But I was putting on a show. I got excited. Oh well. So who won this event? Not me. But congratulations uh, to Sotir. Uh, oh. No, oh, okay. Yeah, not one of the members of my chat, obviously. But um, yeah, Sotirakis um, from Greece. Very nicely played. Uh, yeah, performance rating of 2531. And this is just like an hourly rapid arena. So this is folks just playing, like, there's no huge prize online. There's just honor. So congrats to those who played well. Uh, did I outperform my rating? I entered the tournament with a rating of, tw wait, is this my current rating or? It doesn't really matter. I guess my active rating at present is 2192. 
and I had a performance rating of 2137. So if you do the math, probably I lost rating points this event, um, despite having a win rate of 78%. Um, yeah, probably lost, I don't know how many points, but oh well. Uh, yeah, actually, if we'd not lost the first game, this is a decent event for me. Uh, how did I lose this again? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember now. Well, nicely played to my opponent. So, hope you all enjoyed. Yep. Uh, if you want to know where to find tournaments, you just go under Play uh, Arena Tournaments. You can look at the schedule. And they've got all kinds of tournaments uh, being played all the time. So these are a lot of fun. Um, I have always suggested to Leech Us that they have some thematic tournaments, and thankfully they still have them. So please enjoy the rapid, or please enjoy these thematic tournaments, where they give you like a fixed starting position, and based on the fixed starting position, you get to learn a lot more about this particular position. And this way, even if you're not confident playing every opening, maybe there's one or two openings you can develop some confidence in. The thing that makes it a bit tricky is that there's a different uh, thematic all the time. I mean, in theory, anybody could create a tournament. It's just user-created tournaments don't all show up in this page anymore. But yeah, there's thematic tournaments going on fairly regularly, so these are a great opportunity to learn and become familiar with a single opening. And if some strong player whops you in the opening, play what they played against your next opponent, and you know, you'll learn it. It's a great way to learn. Chess clubs in real life do this kind of thematic event all the time, so try that out too. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.